You may be a doctor, but I am the doctor. The original, you might say. Hey guys, I'm Phil. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Doctor Who, the Christmas special Twice Upon a Time. First off, sorry this is several, several, several days later uh, than the episode come, came out. I try and get these reviews of Doctor Who out as quickly as I can, but Christmas time, you know, I have a family, I need to spend time with them. And this is the first opportunity, it's the 29th as I'm recording this, this is the first opportunity I've had to record this review. So, sorry for the delay. Twice Upon a Time is written by Stephen Moffat and directed by Rachel Tullerley. Did I get that right? Is it Rachel? Is it Tullerley? It's something like that. Sorry, should have checked my facts first. And it's Peter Capaldi's swan song. It's his last ever episode, his last Christmas special. It's Stephen Moffat's swan song. It's uh, Murray Gold's swan song in composing the music. Pretty much all of the writers' swan songs. It's It's the end of an era, even more so than when... Stephen Moffat took over. Then there was at least a little bit of continuity. Uh, you had uh, Murray Gold continued over. Did I say Andy Murray earlier on? He's a tennis player. He's not. He doesn't compose music, but Murray Gold does. Back in 2010, Murray Gold carried on. There were a few other production staff that carried on. This time it feels like a much bigger change that is coming. Um, so it's definitely very significant end of era stuff. And we got... For that, a very different type of episode. We the, Previously, when we've had Doctors changing, uh, there have been a, a certain type, very action-orientated. This was much more thoughtful, I thought, which some may view as bad. Some like the big action. Um, but I I thought it was uh, po uh, quite good. I Look, it wasn't a perfect episode. But overall, it ranks certainly in the top half of my Christmas specials, I think. Possibly it's not the worst Doctor Regeneration episode. It was a good episode, I think, overall, with some flaws. I love the start. I love the whole previously on Doctor Who, 709 episodes later. What other show can do that? Um, and the use of the, the archive footage from the 10th planet into the newly recorded footage recreating bits of the 10th planet. On that subject, though... I am sure I saw a lot more clips than we used there, which means they recorded a lot more, which I'm, I'm slightly disappointed we didn't get to see more of. We didn't get to see more of Ben and Polly, for instance. But maybe that slightly leaves me in a little bit of hope that they recorded it to recreate the episodes for a future DVD release of The Tenth Planet. That's a possibility we can only keep our fingers crossed for. I thought the performances of all the main actors in this were top-notch. Peter Capaldi, as ever, knocked it out of the park. I think he is such an amazing actor. Um, and in terms of his acting ability, uh, whether or not he's your favourite Doctor because you connect with him or not, I think he is one of the best actors to have played the Doctor. Possibly uh, David Tennant is a bit of a match. Uh, Christopher Eccleston certainly is, but he, in terms of act, raw acting ability, Peter Capaldi has got it, and he shows it in this episode as well, which is great. David Bradley is fantastic as the First Doctor. He's got the mannerisms down. He embodies the character so well, so much more so than I've forgotten his name, but the actor that did it, that played uh, the First Doctor in the Five Doctors back in the eighties. He does it so much better, and I mean, we all knew he would because he did it so well in the uh, 50th anniversary um, Adventures in Time of Space docudrama that was so good. And in terms of his performance, it was fantastic. I'm looking forward to listening to the big finish plays with him. In. I doubt we'll see him on, on TV again as the first Doctor, but I am very much looking forward to many future adventures in Big Finish with him playing the First Doctor, because I think he got it, he nailed it. I also liked most of the interaction between the two Doctors. There were some very funny moments in there, some uh, some sort of references to how their differing styles and how the Doctor has grown since he was the First Doctor. Even in terms of what he thinks his role is within the universe, uh, the Doctor, the First Doctor, there's that line where the First Doctor says, This is Earth. A level five civilization. And it is protected. It's what? 
Because at this point, the Doctor doesn't think of himself as the protector of humanity. He doesn't think of himself as the... The First Doctor doesn't think of himself as somebody who goes out there and saves the universe. He's just... just sort of falls into these situations. And it's only later that he develops, starts to develop this this feeling that he needs to go out there specifically to protect people. So it's, it's nice to see that contrast. But we do need to deal with the elephant in the room, which are the slightly sexist portrayal of the First Doctor, which uh, irked me slightly. And I, you know, I'd seen all the build-up of the bits and the worries about this and people commenting about it online before the episode aired, and I thought, well, it might not be too bad. Uh, it might be okay, you know, a couple of comments here and there. But the thing was, he rattled them off so much uh, that it, it did get a little bit annoying. The first Doctor was never that sexist. I mean, there may have been the occasional comment that we would look back on now and think, oh, that, that's a little bit, that's a little bit not quite right. Make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. But that's like a, like a couple of comments over the whole of his run, over three years of episodes. Here in this special, he's rattling them off sort of comment after comment, sexist comment after sexist comment, and it just doesn't feel right. I, it seems like Stephen Moffat has done this just for, exaggerated it just for effect, and I think it's bad writing on his part. Um, it's my one major gripe with this episode. I overall really enjoy this episode, but this, that is just, what, what was the point? I, I, I kind of get the wanting to show how the Doctor has progressed, and you can do that in other ways, like they did nicely with the, with the whole level five planet thing, and, and saying, and showing that he has evolved to feel that his role as the, uh, by the time he's the 12th Doctor, is to protect the world, to protect humanity. That was a nice way of doing it. They didn't need to show the change so much in, you know, one comment would have been fine. One, that, that first comment, and leave it at that, would have been enough to do the effect about it overdoing it, but yeah, it was just a bit overdone. I liked Mark Gatiss as the captain. I thought he did a really good job of portraying the character. It was it could have been a much more interesting character. I just think it was a bit underused, and partly that's the the time that they had. But he spent most of the time in the TARDIS, which I don't know about you, but felt a little bit wasted. So uh, it would have been nice to have seen a bit more of him. The couple of times he did venture out of the TARDIS, he sort of immediately had to go back in again, um, either because they were escaping pretty quickly after he exited the TARDIS, or he had a Dalek creature face hug him or something. Um, yeah, it just felt a little bit underutilised, but there were some nice moments in there, especially at the beginning when he's in the crater with the German soldier. That was really nice and really well acted. Um, and the end bit as well, again, back in the crater, the armistice and stuff. Um, that, that worked really well. And... I really liked the connection. I mean, we were all kind of thinking there was going to be a Brigadier connection in there somewhere. Uh, turns out he's the Brigadier's grandfather, and that's revealed to the Doctor at the end, which is a nice touching moment and a nice way to to reference this character that had been with Doctor Who since the since the 70s. Then we've got Bill. Um, I wasn't sure about how I felt about Bill's inclusion in this, in the trailers and stuff, because she had such a nice exit. I thought it was a wonderful exit in season 10 that I was worried about this spoiling it. Um, and for me, it didn't, it didn't spoil it. Um, it didn't make it either. I think it was a, I could have taken it or left it thing. It's great seeing Bill. I love Bill. She's a great character. So it's, it was nice to have her in that respect. Uh, the other nice thing about it, I think, was that the, there was always this lingering kind of mystery of what the puddle creature was. And there was something piloting the puddle uh, in that very first episode of season 10. And that was a bit of a mystery that was still left. And now now we kind of know what it is. Um, it was this organisation from New Earth, nice reference there, called The Testament, who are not bad guys. Which is another thing I actually quite liked. I've seen people criticise this as well as people liking it. And I fall on the side of liking the fact that there wasn't a bad guy in this episode. There wasn't an evil person. There wasn't an evil entity. There wasn't an evil organisation doing bad things. 
there was just a mystery to be solved and this organization behind it uh was benevolent i guess and i really like that line the doctor has it's not an evil plan i don't really know what to do when it isn't an evil plan and yes, that meant for a very different type of Doctor Finale, uh, a, a very different regeneration episode. But I quite like that. It's it's good to get something different. You didn't need the big bad guy who was going to kill him in the end to make him regenerate because he was already regenerating. The Cybermen had already killed him. He was just holding it back. So you didn't need that big bad guy to kill him in the end. There was Rusty, uh, the Dalek, the good Dalek, uh, the Dalek that hates Daleks coming back into it from... I think that was from series eight i think and yeah that that didn't bother me that was kind of a nice callback i suppose people might have been confused if they couldn't remember who rusty was it took me a couple of a little while to kind of figure out where where did where have we seen him before quick comment about the music this is murray gold's last episode and he clearly wanted to do a kind of look back through his back catalogue of stuff that he has composed for Doctor Who because there were lots of pieces in fact pretty much all the music was stuff he's used before in other episodes I'm not I mean correct me if I'm wrong but I couldn't spot anything that was new and some of it seemed to jar a little bit it was another thing that kind of pulled me out of it a little bit because you got various themes from characters that weren't there that were kind of like I'm I can't remember the exact ones, but it might have been Rosa's theme. It might have been, I don't know, Donna's theme. There were there were definitely themes in there for companions that weren't there, which was a bit jarring because you think, oh, you associate that music with that particular character, and when then when it's used in another context, it just doesn't seem quite right. Some of it is fine to use, like I, I even what music that's, that's uh, associated with other doctors, like Madman in the Blue Box for Doctor Eleven is associated with the Eleventh Doctor, but that would that was fine to use. I think I heard a bit of that. But some of it just jarred a little bit and, and took me out of it. I would have liked some more original music with maybe a couple of callbacks, but not not quite it all being callbacks on the music front. And Clara. Clara made her cameo at the end and all that was forgotten is now remembered. He remembers who Clara is. Uh, it was a nice cameo. I quite liked it in itself. It, it, I'm glad she didn't play a bigger part in the episode. I'm glad it was just a nice little cameo. It was a memory. However, I do think it kind of spoils a little bit her ending because it was a big thing that he couldn't remember her. Um, and I get why they did it because if you're going to ever have her come back, you want it to be the 12th Doctor that says goodbye to her and not another future Doctor. But I don't know. It couldn't... It kind of spoils her ending a little bit, I think. Um, but as they filmed it, as they included it, it was done quite well. It just, it's annoying that it spoils her ending a little bit. And now do I could take or leave, frankly. I like him now, but I don't think he needed to be there. But I'm not fussed he was. Which brings us right to the regeneration. The, first of all, the speech. Okay, so the speech, there were bits of it I liked. I loved all the, you know calling back to the some of his other speeches and things things about you know be kind and stuff but the whole framing of it of kind of speaking to his future regenerate his future self felt a bit weird and felt a bit like it was Stephen Moffat giving a list of instructions to Chris Chibnall a bit it kind of felt like it was like I think this is what the Doctor is, and therefore I'm telling you this is what the Doctor should be, so don't forget it, type of thing. Especially the bit about the name. Oh, and... and you mustn't tell anyone your name. Because the name thing is very much Stephen Moffat's thing. He he introduced that and, it, and, and teased it in front of us and then, you know, said, nope, should never be revealed. To set that in a kind of like the Doctor feels... I don't know, it just, it felt a bit weird, the way it was framed. But there were some good moments in it, and Peter Capaldi, being the amazing actor that he is, even though it was weird, pulled it off amazingly. But why did they have to destroy the TARDIS again? I really like that TARDIS. I'm really disappointed that TARDIS isn't going to be the TARDIS interior for the new... I, I know they want a clean slate and everything, and I get I gather that Chris Chibnall asked for a big explosion-y 
thing so that the tar the TARDIS would blow up. But phew, I really like it. And do they need to do it every time now? It's it's getting a bit tedious. Come on, can we not have some bit more lower key regenerations again that don't explode everything around you? As for Jodie Whittaker's first scene, I don't know what there is to say about it, really. there's uh, There wasn't that much there. It was very, it was amazingly well shot. I mean, this whole episode is amazingly well shot. Props to the director here. She also directed the last two episodes of season 10, and they were amazingly shot as well. I think she's a fantastic director. She really uh, sort of frames stuff amazingly well and has a clear vision of what she wants it to look like, and it looks amazing. And the post-regeneration scene was no exception. It was beautifully shot, all this mist around, and the way the Doctor was framed in front of the console. It was fantastic. And that ring just dropping off her finger, I think all that imagery it was absolutely amazing. Um, and then we get her one line, which may have been O oh, brilliant, or may have been R oh, brilliant, all in a northern accent. Uh, there's debate about what she said. R or O, doesn't really matter, it's one line. The only thing we really know from it about her character is that she's clearly going to be speaking in her northern accent. And then, was it just me, or was the TARDIS kicking her out? Because the TARDIS wasn't exploding after she regenerated. She pressed a button, and then suddenly, boom, and the TARDIS tilted sideways, and was. Tr it looked to me like the TARDIS was trying to force her out. Why would it do that? I don't know. Will she find the TARDIS in the first episode of the next season? Who knows? Chris Chibnall, uh, there's lots of theories that he wants to do a season-long, sort of more broad churchy one story over ten episodes, which, if he does do, a lot of that may be just looking for the TARDIS. It may be missing after this, after Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor has fallen to Earth. So we'll have to see. We may not even see the new TARDIS and the new TARDIS console for quite a while in the new season. We'll just have to wait and see. So what did I give this episode? I would give this episode... Oh, it's difficult. Uh, let's give it a 7 out of 10. I enjoyed it. I would watch it again. I loved the interaction between the Doctor, the two Doctors, um, and there were some other nice little bits in there. But uh, there were also some bits that bring it down a little bit. The sex... The, the random sexism. Could have been better, but... It was pretty good. Looking forward to next season now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all that jazz. And uh, yeah, I'll be back when season. Well, I'll be. I'll have videos in the meantime on Doctor Who and all sorts of other subjects. So please do subscribe. And I will be back reviewing more episodes when they start next year. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>